this lesson we are going to see how important chemistry is to protect our environment. Hello students, in this lesson we are going to see how important chemistry is to protect our environment. Environmental chemistry helps us to be global thinkers and local actors. This is the smallest molecule we have. Do you know what it is? Yes. It is a hydrogen molecule. If you have only one, it is? Hydrogen atom. An atom. It does not exist by itself. It needs to fulfill octet. In this case, it is duet. Because uh, only two electrons occupy the first shape, orbitals. So H2 is... Uh, happy, stable, fine molecule. Here we have CH4. We don't see the electron pairs, but we know carbon is bonded to oxygen through a pair of electrons. We know it is there. We can prove that through spectroscopy, which is not important here. So we have four hydrogens occupying vertices of a tetrahedron. So now inside our brain, we can form a shape that looks like this one. I know this is not the best of its kind, but it helps. So every student can make their own tetrahedron at home. Just cut pieces of triangles about the same size and connect them around uh, this tetrahedral shape. So this is CH4. What is the name? Methane. Methane. Now, Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine are in period two. Uh, I don't have, and I don't need them, but to make this complete, we would have boron here, beryllium, and lithium. lithium. So from lithium all the way up to neon make period two. two. So the octet would be? The octet would be eight. Eight. They need to have eight electrons around the central atom for the molecule to be stable. So if you bring just an atom of carbon and as many atoms as you have of hydrogen, heat them. They form methane. Why do they form methane? Because they would like to be stable. Carbon has how many electrons? Valence electrons? Four. Four. So to be stable, it requires how many more? Four. Four. So how many pairs of electrons will be around carbon? four pairs and all of them are going to be bonding pairs do we have non bonding pairs no no so four bonding plus zero non bonding a total of four four pairs of yes. electrons in the case of nitrogen what is its atomic number 
uh, its atomic number is seven. Seven. Its valence electron. How many valence uh, electrons? Uh, atomic uh, number is seven. Yes. If you write the electronic configuration, two electrons in the inner in shell. Two electrons in the inner shell. And five on the outer. So how many valence electrons? Uh, it will be five. Five. But, uh, the valence is three. But I was asking you the number of valence electrons. It will five. be five. Because it has five, how many more electrons does it require to be stable? Three. Three. So three partners will come into picture. Yes. If they are hydrogen, each, each one of them comes with? One electron. One electron. So one electron from hydrogen, one electron from nitrogen. One from nitrogen, one from hydrogen. One from hydrogen, one from nitrogen. In any case, three pairs of electrons. But electronegativity of nitrogen compared to hydrogen is smaller or greater? Electronegativity is of smaller. Higher. Higher. Why? Because when you go to the non-metal uh, group, the electronegativity will uh, increase. As you go to the right, it increases. But that is an observation. That's not the reason we give. That's what we see. I'm not asking you why, but your observation is correct. As you go towards the right, the nuclei of the atoms, in this case, we have carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Fluorine has the highest electronegativity of all elements. Yes. As you go to the right, neon is to the right of fluorine but its electronegativity is much, much less than that of fluorine. We don't have to go into the details here. But for these four, the highest, second highest, third, no. and the least. Okay. But carbon-hydrogen bond is slightly polar because they are different atoms. They have different electronegativity. Carbon is more electronegative than Hydrogen. So the dipole moment would be slight positive, slight negative. How about this one? The same thing, but they all point towards carbon. And they cancel out. If we, if we pull you with the same force, okay, go from that side, okay? You can imagine you're sitting there. At 109.5 degrees from me, and there is another one pulling you from that side. There is another one pulling you up. Which way would you move? Would you come towards me, towards him, towards that person, or towards that person? We all pull you with the same force. You wouldn't know that you are being pulled because it cancels out. What if we push you with the same force? You wouldn't know that we, you are being pushed because the vector sum is zero. So we say the molecule, though the bonds are polar, the molecule as a whole is? <coughs> Nonpolar. Nonpolar. It is different for ammonia. Because we have a lone pair, a non-bonding pair, there are Three bonding pairs and one bonding, non-bonding pair. A total of four, like here. A total of four, like here. But the number of non-bonding pairs is increasing. So around here, there is a lot of electron. Three pairs. Here you have two pairs. Here you have only one. Here, none. So this is the most polar, the least polar, or non-polar. This will not dissolve in water. Both hydrogen fluoride and ammonia will dissolve in water. in water. How about H2? Yes, it dissolves in water. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Because it's nonpolar. It is nonpolar. It is not because this is carbon and that is hydrogen. It is because overall it is nonpolar. 
This is also nonpolar, and therefore it's not going to dissolve. So the shape determines its property. Yes. If you take this molecule, carbon dioxide, if you, it's made of two elements, carbon and oxygen. oxygen. Two elements, carbon and oxygen. If you have only one oxygen per carbon, because the supply of oxygen is limited, it is limited. In that case, instead of giving two oxygens for one carbon, you will give one oxygen for one carbon. You have to be fair. Science is very, very fair. If there is a line of people waiting to take sugar home, when you have 1,000 people lined up and you have only 1,000 uh, uh, kilograms, would you give each person one kilogram or give two kilograms for one person and let 500 people go home empty-handed? Which one would you do? Uh, give them uh, one. One each. So you'd f make carbon monoxide. But if there is lots of sugar, give them as much as they need. So if they say, well, I wish I could have taken more sugar, but I don't have money. But so people who come with lots of money, they can take as much as they need. So it is the supply and demand issue here. So when is carbon monoxide formed? When there is insufficient, insufficient, supply. insufficient supply of oxygen. And when does that take place? Usually in the wind, uh, it's summer now, but uh, because it's cold, people think it is winter. During the rainy season, when it is very cold, people feel comfortable to have charcoal next to them burning. And then they close the door. Carbon monoxide starts to form. It builds up. And then you inhale it. It is anesthetic. And you'll have good dreams. And then you go, you sleep. And you sleep forever. Do you want to sleep forever now? No. No. I would like you to, to, to stay around for about eight years more. Okay? If that is what you want to do, make carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is not a poison. Electrons have moved closer to this. Electrons have been removed from here. So the sum of the two would be zero, but there is difference. So this bond is polar. The dipole moment of this one is the magnitude, absolute value. How about for this one? The same. It's hydrogen carbon, hydrogen carbon. So all of them, dipole moments po point from positive to the negative. From positive to the negative. So you have a vector quantity. A vector quantity, a vector quantity, a vector quantity. All of them pointing towards carbon and they cancel out. So what is the dipole moment of this molecule? Zero. Even though it has polar bonds, the total sum is? Zero. Zero. So this molecule is? Non-polar. Non -polar. How about ammonia? Ammonia will be polar. Oxy uh, nitrogen, hydrogen. The three bonds are polar. And the fourth one is more polar. So around here you have negative. Toward the bottom you have positive. So it is polarized. So ammonia is polar. How about water? It, will be <coughs> it is polar. More polar than this. Yes. So ammonia and water dissolve in water. Because water is polar. Water is polar, ammonia is polar, so they associate. Th through the positive end, 
it associates with the negative of this. It is not a covalent bond. It is a weak ionic bond. But they will stick together. If you take this one, no, this is nonpolar, this is polar, they hate one another. So methane does not dissolve in, in water. water. Ammonia dissolves in water. water. <coughs> How about hydrogen fluoride? Is this polar or nonpolar? It will be uh, polar. Very polar. Very polar. So it dissolves in, in water. water and makes hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid is when you bubble hydrogen fluoride gas into, into water. water. That's what you get. Uh, have you smelled ammonia? No, I haven't. Have you? No. Proteins, in addition to carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, have nitrogen. If an animal dies, do you enjoy the smell? No. Hmm. Nitrogen, when decomposed, forms ammonia. The ammonia, if you want somebody to smell ammonia, take them to a latrine. The decomposed waste from the latrine releases lots of ammonia. When latrines stink, it is ammonia coming out. Modern uh, latrines have are called WC. What does WC stand for? Water closet. You close the pit, the hole, through which the gas comes. Not with a piece of wood. If you try to close it with a piece of wood, unless it is airtight, the ammonia will manage to come and your house will stink. So what, what should you do? You should seal it with water. Seal it with water. Close it. With, how, how do you close it with water? If you look at the modern latrines, there is always water, clean water on the surface. The pipe is bent. When you flush it, it's going to clean it, but there will always be water because it can't go. It's this one protects it. That's a WC, water closet. If you leave it like that for a week, ammonia will keep coming, will dissolve. If it gets saturated, it releases it. So after some time, again, it stinks. Even though there is water, there is a limit to the capacity of the water to catch ammonia. So you should always flush it. Otherwise, it won't stay long uh, clean. So we're using chemistry to trap the ammonia that gets from the decomposed uh, yeah. human waste into our house because water is polar, ammonia is polar, polar dissolves polar, so you dissolve the ammonia in water so that it doesn't come into the air and disturb you. But methane does not dissolve in water because it is nonpolar. So it is from the structure that follows the property, whether it is soluble in water or not soluble in water. So chemistry is always interested first in determining the composition and then how these atoms are connected, bonded, and from the overall structure you get properties of the molecules. Uh, I hope I still have my carbon dioxide. Mm. 
get me this. Carbon dioxide. What is its composition? With carbon and oxygen. Carbon and oxygen. How many carbons and how many oxygen? Uh, if I say, if I say carbon oxide, it can be carbon dioxide or carbon, carbon monoxide. Carbon oxide. <laughs> if it's carbon monoxide, it is a poisonous gas. People die from carbon monoxide poisoning. You have one carbon bonded one. to oxygen. One oxygen. Uh, I don't. This is not meant for a triple bond, but assume this is connected. I hate this gas. If you generate, when do you produce intentionally or unintentionally carbon monoxide? When? When we when burn we charcoal. Charcoal. With insufficient oxygen. Insufficient oxygen. oxygen supply. If there is a lot of charcoal and limited amount, insufficient amount of oxygen, then you will be forced to give only one oxygen for one carbon. But if there is lots of oxygen, then instead of this being formed for every carbon, you will supply two two oxygen atoms. So instead of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide will be produced. Which one do you like? Carbon dioxide. So even if it is cold in the rainy season like cramped, these days it's very cold. So you, you want to feel comfortable. So you bring your charcoal into your house and you don't want the thieves to come into your house and loot you. So you lock it. When you lock the door against the thief, you're also locking the door against oxygen. You're making it difficult for it to come. So instead of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, monoxide. will be produced. And then you s s take it in, you breathe it in, and it's a good anesthesia. Do you know what anesthesia means? Yeah. It makes you unconscious. Anesthesia is administered in hospitals before surgery. surgery. Now, are you going to have surgery on her? No. Then you will have a very good sleep, and then that will be the end of your life. In the morning we come, oh, Lydia has passed away. We don't want that to happen to you. We don't want that to happen to anybody. So it is better to be cold than to die in warmth. So you don't want to produce carbon monoxide. So you know now when carbon monoxide will be produced. You know now when carbon dioxide will be produced. If you want the charcoal to continue burning in your bedroom, make sure your, your windows and your doors are open. The ozone problem is not related with carbon dioxide. It is the CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. Uh, now they have been banned. Ethiopia is still using. Third world countries have been allowed to use. If they tell you to throw out your refrigerator, which works on CFC, you can't easily replace it. You're not that rich. And the contribution to this problem from the developing countries is not that bad. So they say, OK, don't make new CFC-based refrigerators. But those people who have them can get CFC from India and Brazil. And because they would like to sell too. They are underdeveloped. But in the modern world, they are banned. So CFC 
was the problem for the ozone layer, which used to protect us from the UV. Ray. UV. Excessive use, uh, excessive U, uh, UV exposure causes skin cancer. That is not my problem. I have a family secret. Look at my skin. See how beautiful I am. Handsome. Dark color. The melanin protects us. That is not a problem for Africa. As you go north, Egyptians are lighter skinned than us. Greeks, more lighter. Norway, Sweden, Finland. Oh, they're very white. white. So they are exposed. Their melanin content is so low, UV uh, can damage them. It can cause cancer, and that's very terrible. But carbon dioxide, we're producing more carbon dioxide these days than we used to. What is the source? Ethiopia is a major producer of carbon dioxide these days. Where? Which factories? Mm. Who use limestone? Cement. Cement, Cement, Cement factories. Worker. What is the composition of limestone? Let's study its chemistry. Calcium carbon. Carbonate. The formula? Ca CO3. Three, yeah. If you heat it, calcium carbonate decomposes into calcium oxide. If you take one mole of calcium carbonate, what is its mass? What will the unit be? It will be AMU. One mole? Mole. Gram. Gram. Atomic mass of calcium is, you don't have to know it by heart. You can refer to your textbook or Google it. Or during exams, it's given. You're not supposed to know that uh, by heart, OK? You don't need to memorize it. I will tell you, calcium is 40, around 40. Calcium only? Calcium is 40. So calcium carbonate, car you know carbon is? Carbon is uh, 16. Uh, no, no, 16 is oxygen. 12. 12. So CO3. 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 Oxygen is uh, 16. 16 times 3, 48. 48 plus 60. Plus 12, 60. 60, 60. No. Calcium is 40. Yes. Calcium is 80. Carbonate is 12, 60, and 40 is? 60 and 40, 100. 100 <coughs> grams of calcium carbonate is one mole. You heat it, you get CaO and plus CO2. It's balanced. The coefficients are 1, 1, 1. How many grams of carbon dioxide will you produce from 100 grams of calcium carbonate? One. One gram? Mm. One mole. Yeah. But one mole of carbon dioxide is how much? Twelve. Twelve is for carbon. I'm talking about carbon dioxide. It will be 44. 44 grams. So out of 100 grams of calcium carbonate, you generate 44, 44 grams, grams of carbon dioxide, which is 44 percent. So it's Sorry. a huge amount. So when they make cement, the calcium oxide is a quick lime. They will add water to it. It becomes selected lime, calcium hydroxide. That's what goes into cement. So whenever they make 100 kilograms of When they cement? use uh, 100 grams of calcium carbonate, the limestone, we're releasing 44, 44. kilograms, about 50, close to one half. So it's, we re but you'll have to uh, clean the atmosphere. So you should go up and clean it. 
No, we should uh, we should plant more trees. Very good. And they use carbon dioxide. Yeah, trees use carbon dioxide. So, I was in a committee, a national committee that works on climate. So this is what I suggested. If you give a permit to somebody to produce this many quintals of cement, then ask him to plant this many trees so that they use the carbon dioxide that is released. But will those plants take the carbon dioxide produced by the factory of that person who planted them? Would they know? No, they, no, they don't. They don't know. So, but uh, for example, if they add forty-four grams uh, of carbon into dioxide into the air, into the air, if they plant trees, and if the trees take forty-four grams of carbon dioxide, it it means uh, it is the same. It, it will be neutral as it. Whether was it comes from Kenya or Ethiopia, it will be the same. We have no border on the air. Whatever is produced in America eventually comes here. Whatever we pro produce here, eventually it gets to China. So we have to think globally, but act but can't locally. You can't help. If you are worried about the global warming, do what you can do at home. What, if you tr plant trees here, they will protect the whole world. So if we encourage them to plant trees in their country. So everybody would contribute towards the solution. As we contribute towards the problem, we should also contribute towards the, the solution. solution together. So global approach. You think globally, but you act locally. locally. Yeah, I will have to go to America and plant, but nobody will give you a visa to go. But you may not be able to buy a ticket. Where are you going to stay? So do it here. And they will do it there. All add up and weak. So when you study chemistry, it is not just for the sake of chemistry. Wow, this molecule looks great. And is that it? No, it goes beyond that. You will protect yourself from carbon monoxide if you understand carbon dioxide. If you know when it is produced, how it is produced. I believe I have convinced you how useful chemistry is in protecting our environment. And with this, we end this session.